you're doing something? It's doing something. I'm gonna wait. Articulation. Speaking is an art. I don't feel the need to bind my words in an electronic state, in a Word document or Excel worksheet. No cells for my syllables, thank you very much. I'm touched. I don't rely on spell check. If my words carefully chosen but not carefully spelled are misspelled, I forgive myself for that and applaud my attempt to employ a plaudible vocabulary. In a grammatically simplistic society, if I'm to be called the oddity, I'm odd. And that's fine, these words are mine, I own these. So please, if you need a word but a fancier version, control shift F7 will provide a conversion. No need to open a book to find words not networked through your mind, let your fingers do the talking, click, 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 put down the paper, toss out the bick. So quit, not me. I'm slow, I write as I go, and I don't feel the need to bind my words in an electronic state, in a Word document or Excel worksheet. No cells for my syllables, thank you very much. I'm touched. So, please do know, like all of you here, I do use Excel, I do use Word, and <laughs> I'm not hating on technology. Um, I do use numbers, I do use pages, I use all of these things, however, I do not rely on their templates to tell my story. I do not rely on their functionality to format my thoughts. When I have something to say, I say it and use original terms to convey it. Why? Because it's loud. Silence is a note I never knew. Silence is a note I never knew. Silence is a note I never knew. Silence With email, Facebook, knew. blog, Twitter, the more knew. ways there are to communicate, the more knew. voices there are and the harder it is to hear. Silence is a rare commodity, becoming rarer and rarer. So, if you want to be heard, you need to raise your voice. And I'm not talking about the volume of your voice. I'm talking about the value of your voice the value of your voice, the value of your words. Because words are more powerful and worth more than you may understand. It's words that preserve our past, that shape our future, and that define the moment. This moment. This moment, I own it. This is my style. Declared without denial, my ideal of what's real, I feel it. Can't feel it off. Excuse me while I <coughs> cough and say again, my friend, I own this moment and refuse atonement. For right or wrong, to me it belongs. For better, for worse, my blessing, my curse, I would not take it back. Not take another try. I won't live with regret. Although, please know, I don't forget. You can more than bet this moment is all you're ever guaranteed. Thoughts of tomorrow tend to mislead. So take this moment and own it. Now, whether it's this moment or another moment, whether you're loudly talking or silently typing, you have the ability to speak. And speaking, my friends, is much different than talking. There is a difference. Talking, speaking, many talk, but few speak. Again, there's a difference. So talking then is an action. Speaking is an interaction. Uh, a definition real quick here for you. Speaking, it is a noun. It is an interaction of engagement and enlightenment. Now, if speaking were a dance, it'd be a two-step, so. Let's take them one at a time. Uh, step one then, that's going to be your engagement. Step two, we have enlightenment. So with engagement, that is where we connect. That's where we form that connection. And step two then is where we present that content. So it's interesting because the word engagement comes before the word um, enlightenment. 
for very good reason. Not only is it alphabetically correct in the dictionary, um, but beyond that, you have to engage before um, you enlighten. So, the uh, rules of engagement, there are three. We'll go through them. One, initial intention. Two, common denomination. And three, comes to us from personification. So I'm looking at each one of these. Initial intention. Here we go. Almost. Clicker. Hi. My name's Allie. And that's very boring. Um, so don't do it. Number one, hi, my name is Allie. Number one, it sounds like you're standing up at an AA meeting taking your turn. Or perhaps that you're at a corporate mixer um, introducing yourself at all too formal events. So unless you're there talking about, hey, fabulous me, then um, let's not start out that way. Let's engage right away, present your intention of speaking. Uh, beyond that, we have our common denominator. I am no good at numbers, which is very interesting because I am a buyer in real life and I don't do numbers. I don't know how that works. But anyway, um, so I do know with fractions that when you have a common denominator, it makes the numbers much easier to work with, right? Yes. So. Let's forget the numbers, but let's retain that same concept. Let's take a look then. If I am speaking and I am to address your concern, and then I acknowledge my same concern, well, then I've really formed a common denominator with our concern. We have a connection. And from there, we can move forward. Personification, the next part. Um, it is a metaphor in which a person or an abstraction is represented as a person. So, here's me, here's my message. I'm gonna step out of myself and into my message. You have to become your words, become your message. Now, for those of you who get a little bit nervous when you get up on stage, you know, um, this is a very good thing because you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, because it's not about you. Right now, it's not about me, it's not about Allie. It's about our concern. So that might give some of you some comfort. Uh, after we've had an opportunity to engage, we need to enlighten. Now, the path of enlightenment must be three things. It must first and foremost be multifaceted, and second, repetitious, 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 and the third beyond that, it must be passionate. So, in looking at these, multifaceted, language is multifaceted, and this is what I mean. I mean that it is verbal on one axis, and then it is also visual on another. And because speaking is, because language is this way, your speaking must be too. Uh, I think sometimes we can learn how to speak by listening to those who have no voice. In American Sign Language, in ASL, this is how you would say, I'm fine. Okay, you could say that. Or, perhaps, you might say, or, perhaps, what you really meant to say was, okay? I said the same thing, but I sent three very different messages. Keep that in mind when you're speaking. Uh, repetitious, 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 repetitious. So when you're presenting your content, what you need to do is punctuate your point periodically within that. Uh, let's see, how can I explain this best? I think perhaps an example, something fun. As hard as I've tried, I can no longer hide. As hard as I've tried, I can no longer hide. As hard as I've tried, I can no longer hide. From the truth. No amount of gin and vermouth can conceal what I feel. Time to deal with what's real, time to heal. Christ. As hard as I've tried, I can no longer hide. It's eating me up inside from within, I sin against me, daily. Truths denied are justified as pride maintains despite these refrains of As hard as I've tried, I can no longer hide. Now sooner or later you find the traitor you sought to find within your own mind. Who knew? It was you who did you wrong all along. Truth I spied is now I confide. As hard as I've tried, I can no longer hide. So, remember, speaking is like a song, and it's the chorus that's remembered, not the individual verses, right? Please also remember 
that song that you used to sing when you were little. Remember the head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Who remembers that song, please? Yes, yes, all right. So instead of the head, shoulders, knees and toes, let's throw that away. Let's keep that same rhythm though. And let's say eyes, mouth and all the rest, all the rest. You need your eye contact, you need your voice, and you need your body. Now, passion. To enlighten, there has to be an element of passion. It's not enough for you to hear me, you have to feel me, feel my message. Something I might share with you is a common refrain I used to have, I still do on occasion, and it's that, in words I say and thoughts I convey, I tell myself every day that a plastic cup of milk spilled, mom's not thrilled. She turns wet. And don't cry over spilled milk. So they say, but I cry anyway. You say that it's okay. When was the war of 1812? She'd ask. But no answer came for this simple task. When was the war of 1812? He'd ask. Still no answer came for this, this simple task. And when was the war of 1812? He'd ask. My blank stares returned by glares. And then 1812. Use some damn common sense. Too nervous to answer, provide defense, too scared to be wrong, though I knew the answer to give and what was true. But it's okay. In words I say and thoughts that convey, I tell myself every day that it's okay. Matrimonious intentions made known, now a gown to be sewn, or not. Logic then forgot, now remembered, a status to be dismembered. I'm not this, I'm not that, he deemed. I wasn't enough, it seemed. I was also told I changed too much and such, but that's me. What you get is what you see, I'll always be one who spills things, who can't answer things, who is and is not things, but now I'm okay. And words I say and thoughts I convey, I tell them all, every day, that it's okay. Okay? 